Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. What have I done? I... I didn't want... It was like a dream. Quick. I... I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here.
I've got to get rid of it. Sir, can I get you something else? No, I, uh, I, don't, I don't need anything, thanks. A large snowy cold front coming down from Canada is bringing temperatures far below normal seasonal averages. New snow is expected to fall throughout the day tomorrow, all along the east coast. Here's a temperature map for your area. Nobody goes anywhere. A crime has just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. Diner. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. Five years on the force, I've seen some murders, but you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else, but I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant, as if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different.
How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston. A regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. Did anybody notice anything strange? No, nobody saw anything. Do we have a suspect? A client left just before I found the body. To top it all, he left without paying. Kate tried to talk to him, then he left. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Is the body still there? The boys from the morgue were waiting for you to get here before moving it. Nobody's been in the toilet since we found the body. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I want to make sure she gets home okay. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Okay, let's take a look. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Have you been working here long, Kate? Uh, it'll be 11 years next month. I've seen all sorts in this place. Down and outers, junkies, you name it. The till's been robbed a few times, but murder? That's a new one. John, he was such a nice guy. Can you tell me anything about the customer who left just before they discovered the body? He was just a normal guy. I, I didn't really pay any attention to him. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. What was he like, Kate? Do you think you could describe him for me? I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height, fairly young. That's all I can remember. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my god. You have to try to be strong, Kate. I know that this has been a shock for you, but you're the only one who can help us find the suspect. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. What happened next? The guy just ran off without paying. 
It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized... What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No. It was just a night like any other. Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You, wait, yes. I remember something. I came back at one point, just to check whether he needed anything. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. I didn't push him. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. Good night. Did you find anything, Tyler? For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Man, this guy is dying proof that pissing can be bad for your health. Pretty funny seeing you on the job at this hour, Tyler. What, you fall out of bed? Yeah, don't make me laugh, Gary. My lips are chapped. You look hammered, Tyler. Yeah, this is my third night on call in a row. You know me, man. If I don't get my beauty sleep, it's zombie city. Ah, uh, you should be out of here pretty soon now. <laughs> you don't know Carla. She's capable of keeping everybody up till breakfast. Man, she is by far the most stubborn girl I ever met. Hello? It's me. Did you already fall back asleep? What time is it? Oh, hell. When are you coming back? I won't be long, baby. Go back to sleep. I'll be there when you wake up. Catch you later. <gasps> hey, Carla. I'm gonna take a look outside, see if I can find anything. Hey, footprints. Maybe they belong to the killer. Yo. What do you want? I was wondering, you didn't happen to see anything unusual tonight, did you? Ah, leave me alone. I got nothing to say. 
I don't talk to cops. <laughs> right, thank you. You've been helpful. This is the window from the toilets in the restaurant. Hmm, bloody piece of cloth. Maybe the lab guys can get something out of it. Won't go on any further. I'm gonna head back to the restaurant. something else. She's not always easy to get along with, but she's the best damn cop I know. Martin says this was the guy's table. Steak and fries. Looks like he barely touched his food. Strange. Coffee's not on the bill. Let's go, Carla. I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. I want to take another look around. We haven't found the murder weapon. It might still be around here somewhere. Here's his fork, but where's the knife? A book. The Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for prints? You got it, Carla. A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone.
Frank, can you verify all of the calls that came through this phone tonight? You got it, Carla. Tyler, I'm gonna take a look outside. Good evening, sir. Whoa! <laughs> hey, uh, babe. <laughs> what can I do for you? Cold enough for you? Yeah, well, luckily I got this to keep me warm. <laughs> you want a little splash? <laughs> Someone was killed in that restaurant tonight. Did you happen to see anything or anyone unusual? Did I see something? Uh, I don't see nothing. I mind my own. Business. Okay, I'm gonna go try to get someplace warm. Take care of yourself. <sighs> the door only opens from the inside. Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. Silverware to stab his victim? That would seem to indicate that the murder wasn't premeditated. Tyler, there's a knife hidden here. It might be the murder weapon. Get Garrett. Make sure he checks for prints and identifies the blood on the blade. Okay. No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. Several wounds on the left side of the chest, in the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. some dude in the toilets? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? Just what exactly are you doing, Tyler? I'm checking for clues. What do you think?
Do you know if anyone has contacted the family? Not as far as I know. Hey, I think there's some blood in the sink. Maybe the killer washed up before he left. Yeah, could be. Try and stay awake. Bizarre. What? Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on it. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. a revenge thing, or a psycho. This town is full of psychos. They're everywhere. When I was in the Bronx, I saw guys who'd rip your guts out and hand them to you just so they could take your shoes. Tyler, can you shut up for two minutes? Tyler's been my partner for almost a year. He grew up with the gangs in the Bronx before he decided to join the force. Sometimes he's unpredictable, but he's a good guy. Tyler's got the keys to the car. I better go find him. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. No, nope, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. It's time to get back to the car. I'm dead tired. It 
was all just a horrible nightmare. I didn't kill anyone. I wasn't dreaming. It all really happened. I I'm gonna get ready and go to work. Wrists are still bloody. Gotta do something about that. My parents, Marcus and me, before the accident.
Keys to my apartment. I'll grab them when I'm ready to leave. After what happened last night, I'm not really in the mood to play the guitar. Police, please open the door. These images in my head, I must be losing my mind. Yesterday, at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought maybe I'd pop over tomorrow night after I leave the hospital and pick up a few things. Well, call me back. This morning, at 7.52 a.m. Hello, Lucas. It's Marcus. I'm calling because tomorrow is the 10th anniversary. Massacre in East End Restaurant. An especially horrible murder was committed last night in the restroom of a local restaurant. The killer is a man in his 30s of average height with brown hair. Police are already searching for the man and will be releasing a... New York Police! Please open the door. Police? They know. They've come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. the 
door right now, I will be forced to knock it down. This is your last warning. Open the door now, or I knock it down. I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I, I was in the shower. Are you Lucas Kane? Yes. Mr. Kane, the neighbors heard yelling from your apartment. Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I cut myself on some broken glass, and I freaked out a little. Fortunately, it wasn't a really big deal. Would it be all right if I took a little look around your apartment? Whatever. Go ahead. What happened to your wrist, sir? I told you I had a stupid accident with some broken glass. Holy cow. When you cut yourself, you go all the way, don't you? Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, sorry to have bothered you, sir. You know how it is. With everything that's been going on, uh, we prefer to be careful. I understand. Long, Mr. Kane. The body of a man was discovered in the restroom of an East End restaurant. The victim was stabbed several times with a steak knife. While just yards away, other customers were calmly eating their meals. Investigators are already on the trail of a suspect, who fled the scene just before the body was discovered. Police have no other comment for the time being, but stay tuned for updates into this.
Yesterday, at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought maybe I'd pop over tomorrow night after I leave the hospital and pick up a few things. Well, call me back. This morning, at 7.52 a.m. Hello, Lucas. It's Marcus. I'm calling because tomorrow is the 10th anniversary of the accident, and I thought... Well, maybe you might want to go together this time. Anyway, give me a call. Goodbye. Hello? Hello, Marcus. Lucas, it's good to hear from you. I thought I'd call to find out if maybe you wanted to go to Mom and Dad's tomb together. And, to be honest, I thought it might be a good excuse to get back in touch with you. I need to see you, Marcus. I'm in big trouble. What are you talking about, Lucas? What happened? I can't really talk about it on the telephone. It's serious, Marcus. I'll meet you in half an hour at the park. See you there. Yesterday, at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought maybe I'd pop over tomorrow night after I leave the hospital and pick up a few things. Well, call me back. This morning, at 7.52 a.m.